Hello, my name is Sean Lacey. I'm the Research Integrity and Compliance Officer for the University and this video is a short presentation on informed consent in research in relation to research ethics at MTU, the application process. Now first I suppose it's just it's important to kind of highlight what we mean by the process around informed consent which is where participants that are I suppose or more so human participants that are going to be involved in research are fully informed, competent, and uh, they'll be getting involved in the research voluntarily and they have an understanding of what the research actually is. Now, when you look at that bullet point that's up in the slide there, there's a lot of information on that. So the human participant needs to be fully informed, needs to be competent, needs to participate voluntarily, and needs to have a genuine understanding of the research as well. So there's a lot of information and a lot of responsibility on us as researchers to make sure that we fulfill this obligation and uh, I suppose fulfill, fulfill this uh, responsibility that we have toward the other participants in our research study. How we do this then is we make sure that uh, the participants are fully informed to what the research actually is, what the research study involves, what is actually required of them, what happens to their data as in the storage of it, the analysis of it, the overall management of it, and what are their rights? So the right to ask questions, the right to withdraw from the study, and so on like that. And I think also another thing to, that will be quite important to remember is that when it comes to consent, it's not just, oh, a participant signs the consent form and that's actually it, that we've done consent. Consent is a process that begins before the, uh, the consent form is actually signed because based on all the information that you're providing a participant along with obviously the signing of it but then it goes all the way through to when they I suppose the, the participant completes the study in which case there might be, have to be a debriefing of the participant as well okay so it's just important to highlight that consent is just not a aspect to the uh, study it's actually from the start to the end as well. And just to finish this slide here on, I suppose, a reference from the General Data Protection uh, Regulations, um, consent to processing must be freely given, specific and informed. I think that, and that obviously captures quite a lot of what's been said on this slide and obviously what's going to be coming up in the next couple of slides as well. And there's a reference that I have on the final slide uh, to the slide deck, which is from the Data Protection Commissioner. And this is a report on the rights of individuals under under the general data protection regulations. So this is back in 2018. It's a nice kind of, a, I suppose, summary or guideline document to, I suppose, the rights of uh, individuals and in, in studies. And I suppose it's well worth to read. Um, I try not when I, I suppose, recommending reading or, you know, putting in references that I have include anything that is too long. I suppose it's, I mean, really would encourage that the references that are mentioned would actually be read because, uh, they are quite important and they're obviously linked very much to, I suppose, the content of each of the videos. When it comes to our application forms, because this overall, I suppose, course here is about the application process. So in our application forms, so we have two application forms, so the first being the minimal risk, uh, human research ethics application form. So in section B, research design and methodology, question six, there's a question there, how will you obtain informed consent? And that's where you, I suppose, let the Research Ethics Committee know how informed consent will actually be uh, obtained. In the full ethics, ethical review, human research ethics application in section C, research participants. So this is question 10 of the form. There is a question around how, again, will you, uh, how will consent be um, obtained? But then there's also a, an additional bit, and this is because it's of the full ethical review. Uh, but there will also be additional information to look what will uh, will you be asked, uh, I suppose, what will the participant be consenting to, so what information will you be given, and I'm going to touch on that in another couple of slides as well uh, in that uh, in a few minutes. So I think two things then to remember, I suppose, when we're com is coming to consent is one is the capacity to give consent, so that's the first, and then the next one, next slide will be about um, the consent for minors. But I suppose when it comes to the capacity to give consent, there are, I suppose, four steps that we should keep in mind for this. And it's a case of, does the participant actually understand the research study? So are they, are they able to understand the information about the decision that they're going to give you? 
do they do, does the participant appreciate the information so they do they can they are they able to use the information that you've given them to actually make a decision the next one then is the reason so d does a participant will they be able to make a sense of it uh, i suppose ration rationalize or even remember the information that you've actually been uh, provided them with and then the final one would be around communication so does a participant or can a participant communicate their decision by talking to you by using sign language or another mode of communication what is that available to them and if it is well then that's where i suppose participants would generally across these four steps would have a capacity to give consent but obviously if if any of these cannot happen well then that's where i suppose a consent needs to be obtained from another individual now i suppose examples of where um capacity to make a decision might be impacted uh, upon would be based on and this was again similar to the previous uh, video i would have done is i'm very always slow in giving lists or giving examples because i suppose it doesn't don't necessarily want the examples to be seen as exhaustive but obviously for information purposes it can be useful to give examples nonetheless so examples of where i suppose capacity um to make a decision may be impacted are if participants have mental health conditions learning disabilities in are uh, suffering from intoxication dementia physical or mental conditions and so on like that so that just gives an idea to i suppose what you be needed to be aware of as researchers for when we're looking for consent from participants to, uh, to be involved in our research study the next thing then will be consent for minors okay and i suppose this is look every, everything has been mentioned is, is quite important but i suppose when we're looking at minors it's always the case of that we it really seems that we need to have that extra care um but i suppose when it comes to the consent for minors and even when it comes to all the consents that we would be getting there's always going to be an information leaflet attached to the consent form because i suppose the participant needs to know look what are they giving a consent for and what will be important that when we're looking for consent for minors is that that information leaflet is child friendly and it is clearly understandable by the age group of the actual participants as researchers we should be aware and be prepared that we may need to read out the information uh, leaflet to ensure that the uh, participants actually understand what's being involved and we also need to make sure that we allow enough time for the participants which in this case are minors or children uh, know what it takes to actually be involved in the study and is no know, knows what's actually required of them and i suppose obviously a lot of that can be quite challenging so this is where when it comes to consent for minors that there needs to be parental or legal guardian consent and then assent from a child if possible so the consent to child's participation must be obtained from the parent or legal guardian that would be common practice if the child is of sufficient competence so understands actually what's going on with the, with the research study well then the child's assent must also be uh, sought in that case okay but and when it, that assent is being sought it should be in a child appropriate manner as well so and uh, obviously that would be very much dependent on the i suppose the sufficient competence of the actual child the next thing then that we need to be aware of when we're looking around the consent for minors is what if a child decides to not participate or decides to participate but then to withdraw that we need to make sure that we handle that with care that we don't want like i suppose if this was kind of maybe something in a classroom setting that we don't want the child to feel any way different or left out during the course of the research study and it would actually be important that we be prepared for that so that there would be a kind of a special arrangement put in place and if this happened ha happened whereby a child decided not to participate and withdraw and in the information leaflet that this special arrangement will be clearly explained as well that would be very important because obviously we need to protect the child that does not want to be involved or decides to actually withdraw need to protect them that they don't feel left out or that they don't feel different so that's something that's quite important the last thing to be aware of when we're looking for consent from child's or isn't uh, for minors is if we're looking at uh, doing a study a research study that is over time so a longitudinal research study well then the child's age obviously will change over time that the child and this depends really on the cohort that you actually have in the research study but they may change to where they'll actually be able to give consent to themselves and if that's the case if their age changes where they can give consent themselves well then reconsent needs to be obtained or collected 
And when it comes to that reconsent, that it needs to be accompanied by the appropriate uh, information leaflet. And when I say the appropriate information leaflet, I suppose the information leaflet with language that is, I suppose, tailored to the age, I assume in this case, then would be no longer of a minor. It's now a, 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 a potentially an adult in this case. Okay, so that's just something to be aware of that when you're looking for consent for minors is that the you may need to get reconsent as well. Okay. The next thing then, and I suppose I've mentioned kind of an information leaflet, and I suppose this is a case of that when a participant is giving consent, what are they giving the consent to? So it's our, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that we're given the appropriate information. For the minimal risk uh, application form, we don't, I suppose, specify what needs to be covered in the information leaflet, because I suppose it's very much dependent on look what the actual minimal risk research study actually is. But when it comes to the full ethical review, human research ethics application in section C, question nine, there is a list of what we would expect to see in an information leaflet. So this is where uh, the research ethics committee are asking the applicant or the applicants to are they actually providing this information to participants in the study. And if they're not, maybe to outline why they're not. Now, this is used in the full ethical review application. Now, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing saying that if we're doing a minimal risk application that we could use the same kind of template for information leaflet, that's absolutely fine. And that's down to the actual researcher to decide that. The information that generally would be given in this kind of uh, area, I suppose, would be in the, as when I say area is in, in the information leaflet, would be kind of introductory information to who the researcher is, uh, what's the research area, what's the title of the research. Uh, then it's a case of what's the research about? Why is it being carried out? Why is the participant asked to be uh, to, uh, to actually get involved? How will the data be gathered? So that's, so that's obviously quite an important one. And if we jump down from how the data will be gathered down to, to how will uh, participant privacy protected be protected? That's very much around data, I suppose, storage, um, retention, management, destruction. And that they're obviously all very important that that information would, would be need to be shared with the participant before they consent to being involved. What is expected of the participant if they decide to be involved in the study? What, uh, what are the benefits to being involved? What are the risks to being involved? Can a participant decide to withdraw? And so all this information should be actually given beforehand. And it's, it's not a case of that these all need to be paragraphs of information, but I suppose some concise statements addressing each of these points would need to be given in the information leaflet. How will a participant be debriefed? It's very important that if a participant uh, commits time to a research study, that we as researchers nearly kind of close that feedback loop to a certain extent where we kind of inform the re, uh, participant, look what has happened to their data and look how has it been pre presented and so on. And then the last, uh, sorry, the second last one is it's important to make sure that the participant is aware that the results or the data that they give you would could be used in a publication if that's the plan or presented at conferences or in the case of, I suppose, our um, research students, it will be, if it's for a thesis, that it will be stored on our institutional repository as well. All that information will be important to call out in the information leaflet, along with contact details. So important to make sure that there is, I suppose, the participant knows who they can contact if they have any questions. And I suppose that is a right of the participant, which is something that I would have mentioned on the previous slide as well. After that then, just the last thing I suppose in this is guidelines for that information leaflet. And I suppose that information leaflet, so those kind of couple of points in the previous slide, are very much dependent on you know the research study, the research participants, the context that is actually for the research. But I suppose the one thing I, when it comes to kind of giving that information or providing a participant with the information, what we need to be aware of is that the leaflet and the consent form are readable, okay? That they are, I suppose, in non-technical language or if there has to be technical language used that it is clearly explained we need to ensure that the uh, potential participants understand what their role is what is expected of them in the actual research study over the time frame what time frame is involved that is very important to state that and then to make sure that we provide sufficient time for the participant to decide or even reflect on do they actually want to be involved in the study that we don't want it to be a case of that we're pressurizing somebody to be involved in the study we need to make sure that we allow sufficient time for that and i suppose like the previous uh video um 
this is not exhaustive okay of everything that is to do with informed consent is in this video here is not exhaustive the slide deck is not exhaustive i suppose it's supposed to set a, a kind of a foundation for i suppose us as researchers to build upon to kind of go and say yeah that that's given started me off in the right direction now i need to read up more on particular aspects i'm going to go to a couple of references on the next cyber and the reason i suppose i say look it's not exhaustive it is that I expect there, to, there can be questions, there might be follow-up questions, and if there are follow-up questions, again, please use that discussions uh, function on the, the Canvas module, please. Okay, And as I would have said in the previous video, make sure just to use an appropriate title, because I think if we use an appropriate title, it'll be much easier to navigate our way through the discussions kind of going forward over the next couple of months, uh, and essentially the discussions will can become a, an FAQ kind of section as well. Here are a couple of references. Um, and I suppose the, these would help inform a lot of the points mentioned here. So I'll just, the Bera Principles, which is the first reference, I didn't actually um, call that out, but I suppose there's a lot of nice information on that around consent, even about vulnerable uh, participants, about um, about capacity. There's a nice bit of information on that, and it's not an overly intensive document that you read, even though it might look like it is, but there's an upload of that. Uh, sorry, I uploaded that to the Canvas module. The Data Protection Commissioner one, I would have mentioned that that was down to the quote that I would have used on an earlier slide. The Health Service Executive, the, which is the National uh, Consent Policy, that's quite a big document. Um, I've uploaded the whole document to Canvas. Pages 63 to 86 relate to research. Some very nice information on that. Um, and it's nicely presented document, as in it's not a hard read, but some nice information on that about informed consent, but also it kind of feeds into vulnerable participants and minors and so on like that. So three I th quite good documents to read and I think again they're not overly hard or technical uh, readings that you know but there are some documents that are very informative and obviously on top of those documents then we have a, have our own MTU codes policies and procedures that we need to be aware of and they're all called out obviously on the canvas module as well okay but look that's it for now uh, any questions again please don't hesitate to shout and use that discussion function okay all the best bye